Are you guys ready up there? Alright. Alright, quiet on the set. On another topic, the preparations for your birthday have begun. I won't get what I really want. No one does. Happy birthday, Mr. Smithers. Welcome back to another episode of Adventures in Movies. I am your host, Danny, and your game show host, your game show host, Danny, uh, to my very, very uh, central Texas is a man that loves to drop liquid swords, our editor in, <laughs> our editor in, at uh, Adventures in Movies, Pat, or Nathaniel. How are you, sir? Hello, hello, hello. Um, I'm doing good. I'm doing very good, actually. Corona-free still, so I mean, what more can you ask in this day and age? <laughs> Um, and and then we have Mr. Laidback Blake. This is your That's first. Right. Re- this is your first wrestling name of the day. Oh yeah. Uh, how are you? I'm doing pretty good, man. I am also Rona free as of now, as far as I know. Um, yeah. That is good. I, I think next time that we do this, we should just start giving our updates if we're Rona free. Rona free. Yeah. yeah. Still yeah. Rona free. Rona free still since Rona. 03. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny to make fun of something. <laughs> that's killed literally tens of thousands. Yeah, I know. Uh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry, people that have lost loved ones to the corona or COVID-19. Um, but Rona, you know, if you're friendly with him. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so we have a we have a pretty good episode for you to get, for you guys today. Uh, we're just going to do a little bit of news. Uh, I know South by Southwest got canceled back in. I don't know what seems to be like years ago, but just last March it got canceled. Uh, and now they're struck up a deal with Amazon. I, I got the email too. I just kind of like did the, you know, the spark notes version of it. Like I was like, Oh cool. on Amazon, it's going to be on this Friday. Is that right? I mean, if you didn't read it. <laughs> yeah, I didn't, no. no, I didn't. Uh, they, 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 there's actually no date for it. No um, date. Oh, okay. Yeah, just as late April. Uh, here, here's the funny thing about uh, the South by Southwest being um, canceled, I guess. But uh, the whole time they were saying, um, you know, what, what, what's in their DNA? Um, the show must go on. The show must go on. It's, it's in our DNA. It's in Austin's DNA. The show must go on. We will not cancel. So, um, Austin, the city of Austin, Austin's mayor actually said that uh, we're going to uh, take. They were following it the whole time, but they said, you know, the city's going to go into lockdown and we're going to do this, this, and that. And uh, South by Southwest, at the time, the organizers said that, you know, based on what the uh, mayor of Austin is saying, um, we're going to postpone the event. Uh, No one's asked us to do this. Uh, We're just doing this for the safety of the community and for our um, uh, festival goers. So ever since then, and if and if you look at that press release, uh, it's really funny how it's worded. Uh, ever since South by Southwest was canceled by the city of Austin, is how they worded, <laughs> <laughs> which is <laughs> hilarious. Shade. But uh, it, it's pretty funny. Uh, but yeah, South by Southwest on Amazon. That's awesome. I I, I hope that uh, I actually had a chance to see. Um, a number of the the smaller films that are there but uh i hope on this uh i think they're calling it the south by southwest collection i really hope they have i, I went two films on there the green knight because I, I was okay. set yeah. for that world premiere <laughs> and um console wars because i didn't get a chance to see that and uh the f- war between Sega and Nintendo was one of the highlights of my young life and it was amazing and i would love to see a documentary on it what did you have what did you have uh, I initially had the Sega Genesis with Altered Beasts. So that's how early I got the Genesis. Yeah, so I I, I, had, I had to buy Sonic, unlike uh, everyone else. Wow. <laughs> I, also had um, I also had a Sega. Oh no, I, thought, I had an, Genesis was a Super Nintendo. I had a Super Nintendo. You know, I, I, I looked Nintendo out. Was probably... It was in, in the grants because they had you know Final Fantasy, which is awesome. But um. The cool thing about Nintendo was that everybody had a Super Nintendo, so you could. It was like super easy to like yeah. trade your Genesis for your Super Nintendo for a while. <laughs> yeah, my neighbor Marcos. Yeah, made him trade it all the time. Yeah, I, I didn't have that kind of luxury because all my friends had Super Nintendos. Uh, I think my cousin Samson was the only person that I knew that had um, 
the Sega Genesis, and he had the best game ever, Sonic, Sonic the Hedgehog two. Uh, so I think I think the Sega Genesis to me was the more superior system, just because it had the better Aladdin game, the better. Oh, Aladdin was really good. Yeah, you know the better Super Street or the better Street Fighter, and the better Lion King. I mean, even though the Lion King and was the Mortal a... Kombat with blood. That's very true. That's code. very Mortal fun. Kombat with blood. That's very fucking true. Hey, your 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 cousin Samson, did you uh just cut his hair and steal his Genesis? <laughs> that's, all. Yeah, that's where the power was. That's very um, true. I I want to. I I've read Console Wars. Um. And uh, it's really interesting because, uh, and it's funny even now that like there's the you know uh, Sony and Microsoft thing. But growing up at that time, I remember like you know eight bit, sixteen bit, twenty like bits was a yeah. huge thing, and yeah. then it just kind of disappeared. But uh, that's a uh, it's a really cool time in gaming. Like I mean, now is amazing what they do with video games. Great what they have now. But uh, I don't know. I just I fondly look back on the whole. You know, Genesis does what Nintendo don't, and all those. <laughs> those commercials and the games are just amazing like who'd ever thought that michael jackson would have a video game and i mean but that's what happens in a war <laughs> it's awesome yeah yeah you that aerosmith game that were like you shot stuff it was just like you shoot stuff but to the music oh yes. hilarious thing so yes th- this this that's awesome because this does tie into our south the south by southwest so <laughs> even though i didn't see console wars i did see insert coin which was about midway during the 90s. Oh, yeah. So they had huge success with the Terminator 2 game. Like yeah. It was like uh, they actually made the game while the movie was being made. So they had access to like Robert Patrick and Linda Hamilton. Uh, they didn't get Arnie himself, but his stunt double is in the game. So um, that's why the game looks so amazing. And uh, that was part of its charm and its appeal. So they wanted to... Um, redo that as you know what happens in video games that you could copy yourself they wanted to do that and the game was supposed to be a gun game with public enemy oh, but, uh, <laughs> oh that would have been public so enemy, good. like they weren't down with it so they ended up with the aerosmith <laughs> oh yeah the way of... <laughs> you know the 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 the, for the the second band when you think of public enemy <laughs> bands like public enemy <laughs> yeah. Yeah, why didn't they do like body count or something? I I see would have done it. Uh, he absolutely, <laughs> especially if you're taking down the man. And it's yeah. called the name of his band is Body Count. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking in the. Uh, it's perfect. Uh, get out! I guess he was too controversial. <laughs> Like, what? like, Public Enemy was controversial, but not too much so. And then Aerosmith yeah. was just super safe. You know? Yeah, he did have a song called Cop Killer. <laughs> 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 that might not have gone over well. <laughs> I mean, you get a bunch of cops, and that's oh, all you do. Oh, I mean, that's fucking Grand Theft Auto now. <laughs> well, and sure. like, uh, uh, um, they could have been corrupt cops because I think that's what the um, Aerosmith what game Star- is about. It's like, oh, it's like some, yeah. it's like it's some kind of dystopia or something like that. I don't know. <laughs> they explained it. <laughs> yeah. and he shot CDs at them, I believe. <laughs> it was like yes, that was that was the. Uh, that was the thing. That was that was the gimmick. <laughs> yeah. shot the so, at this point, to my knowledge, uh, Aerosmith has a video game, an arcade shooter, and a roller coaster at Disney World. What? I mean, they, what? They also what? have here's here's what I learned from this documentary, which is amazing. They actually had an interactive CD game before the shooting game. <laughs> and, the reason that they did this was because way back in like uh, Atari times on, but on computers uh, at that time, Journey had a game. Oh, oh fucking Journey! And, and they showed a. This had a shit. They showed clips of the game, and it's hilarious because uh, they're it's like Steve Perry's giant head, kind of like it's like Pac Man. Pac Manning, but in the background it's playing um Don't Stop Believing, but like you know, <laughs> do 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 like our game. <laughs> it's awesome. <laughs> look at that actually. Uh, <laughs> um uh, one thing that we're still talking about, like all these movie services still doing it. Amazon or I'm sorry, Alamo is actually promoting movies that are a little bit more indie, uh, that you could go rent uh from their uh publishers, anything that helps uh, the you know the company because apparently you know Alamo's not financially doing well uh, at the moment as most theaters are like the rest of us. <laughs> yeah, like the rest of us. Uh, so Join if you go rent, uh, <laughs> so if you go rent a movie, let's say like Extraordinary with Will Forte, 
you know, it's a twelve dollar movie compared to most of the movies that are out right now on Amazon, twenty to twelve dollars. It's it's not a bad deal. Uh, but I think you could only rent it for the you know twenty four hours or that one time viewing. So there you go. Uh, also, I think uh, I think there's an anniversary today as well. I mean, I was drinking my coffee. I was thinking, damn, this is a good cup of coffee. Uh, it's the thirtieth anniversary of uh, Twin Peaks. How do you guys feel about that? Old. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. I I was five years old when this came out. Yeah, I think I was like seven or eight. So yeah, yeah. that sounds about right. Yeah, yeah, a little bit older, a little bit older. Yeah. <laughs> uh, it was like oh shit, thirty years ago, eleven? No, yep. that's too old. I don't know. My math is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> I remember it though. I loved it. I loved it, and I know Pat, you're a huge fan. Yeah. Yeah, it was uh, like the first season is just amazing. Like, uh, uh, I didn't understand it. I'm not gonna lie. <laughs> it's like I, I, there's lots of it that I didn't understand, but it was so different. It was um, I don't know, so quirky. And I mean, Agent Cooper is one of like the best written characters ever. Um, I mean, Sh- Sherilyn Finn, you know, is like really, really attractive. Uh, it has that weird vibe where you can't tell if it's in the 50s or if it's in 1990. Um, yeah. Just uh, the direction. I mean, David Lynch is, you know, David Lynch is David Lynch. So it's, it's it really, I, but I had never seen, um, I think I, I'd seen Blue Velvet at that time. And I don't know if I made the connection of it, but I mean, they're nothing. Well, I mean, there's the whole, if you go into the, you know, the dark uh, underbelly of suburbia thing that he but, was really into at the time. Yeah. But I don't think there, like, there is no connection because I think I did. I, well, I just need the, I just actually said what the connection is. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, <laughs> I but I, I mean, I don't think like. But how long did that, that that take you? How many times did you have to watch, you know, Blue Velvet and Twin Peaks to be like, oh, that's right. You know, I, I think like at the time, I was also like eleven years old, being watching Blue Velvet in Spanish and being, oh, this is this is very horny, uh, and. Uh, <laughs> How are, well, are they like allowed to like, show, show this? As, as a child, like, no, I didn't catch it immediately. But, like, once, I mean, once you, once I saw it again in high school, it's, like, it's pretty, mm-hmm. it's pretty obvious. It's not, I don't want to say it's obvious, but it's there. Like, even the horniness, I know you were joking around about it, but, I mean, that's all over Twin Peaks. Um, yeah. Well, it's all, like, it's anything. That weird. Like, it's just some fucking weirdness to it. Like, you know, it's just got a weird tinge to it that I, I would say is pretty... Yeah, recognizable, I guess, in retrospect, way more so. But yeah, I don't know yeah. if I'd have picked up on it then for sure. No, at the time, no, I had no. I was just like, this is like, oh, oh okay. well, I mean, like everybody else in America, I, w- I wanted to know who killed Laura Palmer. Like, that was the thing. Yeah. Who did it? Like, <laughs> it's this town full of weird people, and it's funny, and, um, you know, it looked like nothing else that was on television. And Kyle McLaughlin's an amazing actor and all that good stuff. But, I mean, it just had a really cool mystery. And then the the second season when Lynch and Mark Frost were less involved in it, like it kind of loses its way when it has the stuff with the owls and UFOs and all that stuff. But then, I mean, it just ends and, you know, goes out in an amazing finale. Um, the 90s were so good for mysteries and like that kind of stuff. Like, yeah, man, there, you don't get that much anymore, man. There was like Poirot and that, and there's like, you know, Murder She Wrote. <laughs> I mean, but there was like lots of, <laughs> and the, there was like lots the of X good Files. Stuff. I mean, yeah, X Files, yeah, for example. Yeah. Uh, like, they did a lot, like, the 90s was really cool. And, uh, yeah. I've been watching The Sopranos, like, which is like the very tail end of the 90s, but, um, because that and The Wire are always like closely linked to each other. I kind of, and, and I love The Wire. I kind of, kind of dismissed the sopranos but um re-watching it um i realized like one i always thought it was a good show but i mean it's an amazingly good show but uh you can really see its um impact and its influence on television i mean i mean breaking bad is like all and Mad Men, they are so indebted to, to the sopranos it's the ridiculous sopranos. yeah, yeah uh, uh well, I mean, and Mad Men, that's a cheap one because, like, one of the writers of The Sopranos is, like, directly created Mad Men. So, I mean, I guess that's oh, kind of an obvious one. I didn't know but, that. <laughs> yeah, but uh, with Twin Peaks, and it might be to a lesser extent, but, uh, like, I think X-Files and Twin Peaks, they, there's a lot of similarities. They're not in storytelling or direction or anything like that, but um, I don't think there would be... Um, what's the word for it? There would be a space for that quirkiness that the X-Files had if there wasn't a Twin Peaks before that. I I completely agree with you on that. 
We love the weird. We love the weird. Uh, <laughs> give me that. Give me that, uh, give me that weird shit. Uh, speaking of weird shit, uh, we watched uh, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind, and <laughs> awesome fucking. <thing. laughs> <laughs> I I was gonna try to like summarize it. I had it in my head, uh, but it completely like went out the window when we started talking about like completely weird shit because I wanted to like talk about this movie. Uh, who, who who wants to summarize this as as best as I can? <laughs> <laughs> well, my review on the the printed oh. review on, on on the website, I titled it uh, "Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind: The." thinking person's ufo documentary <laughs> because of <laughs> it's it's not your it's not your typical like uh you know uh so there's a hidden base this and there's these mysterious pictures that though there is some of that of course because you can't have a ufo documentary without it but uh it does go more into the it's less fantastic than you know alien autopsy for example mm-hmm. oh yeah for sure it's it, 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 yeah it's very much it takes a much more uh, I, I hate to use the term when it comes to UFOs, but it takes a very scientific slant. <laughs> Just... <laughs> you can say that. It's, uh, I, I'll say this about it. So, Well, I guess the first question, and I'll, I'll throw it out there for you guys, is uh, do, do you believe in UFOs? Do I believe in you? Do I believe that there are objects in the sky that I cannot identify? Yes. <laughs> the literal definition of the term, yes. <laughs> yes. I um, yeah. Ex- yeah. I'm with Blake on that. Like, I yeah. There's things that are I can't you know identify out there. To, to answer your, to answer the more broad question of do I think they're aliens? No, <laughs> I do not. <laughs> it's a you live in El Paso. You can't say that. Uh, oh, oh. that. <laughs> oh. oh, gotcha. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, I'm saying because the mil- Fort Bliss, they do lots of testing out there, and you know, there's, there's always stuff in the um, yeah, Exactly. Uh, no, I, I think, like, I guess the short, the short uh, review, sorry, summary of this is, if you don't already, if you're not already inclined, or if you don't really outright believe that there's extraterrestrials that have visited us, then um, chances are you won't really get into this because. Uh, most people who don't believe in that stuff, they love listening to the fantastic stories about it. And mainly so they can say like, oh, that's ridiculous. And, you know, just to make fun of the people who do believe in that. (laughs) Um, If you do believe in it, it still might not be your cup of tea because it doesn't really, well, you know, and maybe I'm stereotyping people who believe in UFOs as the, you know, the tinfoil hat wearing type conspiracy nuts but uh it doesn't really get into that like it kind of touches on it um in bits and pieces and then it goes off in this direction that's almost i don't know motivational yeah it, it's yeah. like if you yeah it was like if you want to believe in these fantastic things that we're, that we're telling you about ufos in the sky then we also need you to believe this fucking thing and then this thing and then this other thing and then we'll get back to that what we were talking about at the very beginning of first, uh, you know, later. But we we need to talk about a lot of things. <laughs> it 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 was like very fast and loose in the in the beginning, and nothing was really tying down. And then as we got to the third chapter, or the th- you know the the last arc of the movie, it kind of, I, that's I think where I lost my interest in this whole thing because it's like what Blake Blake said, you know, well you got to just sit with us here and this one just you know. It might sound crazy, but you know, and then they start tying it in, and you're like, "Oh, yeah, no, like let me start backing out." (laughs) Yeah, I start backing out. I'm like, you know, you had like my attention for a good like, what was this movie was like two hours, like an hour and a half. Yeah, and then you start, (laughs) and then you start tying everything in, and you're like, "Yeah, no, let me just like back, like back it up, guys, like back it up." Like you were fine with just being mystical and bringing the the mystical doctors in here and you know your transcendental like thinking and i uh, the uh, meditation stuff was like the only thing that i related to because i've read some books on it and stuff and like i do try to practice some of that and so it's like i get what they, they were like talking some of that language and i was like okay i follow that kind of you know that kind of shit and so like but then the, the way that they would tie it into like okay so when you do that you put yourself in a vibration and that vibration allows you to see. And it's like, oh, so like now you're t- some of this was like, well, now you're saying that I have to be a special in tune person to see some of this stuff that I'm like, I don't know. Now you're 
now you're getting into like spectrums of the shit that I'm like, all right, well, now I'm not even finding this entertaining. I just think you just. <laughs> It becomes a lot like fiction at that point, and and you both bring yeah. up a good point that uh, it's two hours, and that's a very long time for any UFO documentary, no matter <laughs> how fantastic it may be. But uh, you guys are right; like it touches on all these topics, and some of them are interesting, some of them are kind of out there, and some of them are kind of common sense, to be perfectly frank. But um, once Look it gets up. into it. Like plants, you know, growing towards the light and stuff. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah, <laughs> you like put a plant in the room. It like, yeah, no yeah if you put a plant in a room and uh, there's three corners have shadows and one has light, it'll grow towards the light. It's like, holy shit, that's amazing. <laughs> uh, um, that's science. <laughs> put a once it does get to the... Once it gets to the third act, and like you said, after an hour and a half, and it, and it starts to tie things together, um, it's like, okay, maybe that is maybe interesting. Maybe it is interesting. Maybe it isn't. Maybe it makes sense. Maybe it doesn't. But it took you forever to get to it. Like, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's just, I mean, it's, there's some things that are like, they do make sense in a, in a very, very broad sense, like where it's talking about being attuned. And if you're, if there's a shared consciousness, then you'll start to good things happen to good people almost type of thing but that is a common thing in fiction like very much so but that's all that i could think of is like you know if if you're um is if you're a miserable person like you're you're cursed right you're followed by demons mm -hmm. or a ghost or you're haunted or whatever but and it's kind of hard to take it seriously and and going back to what i originally asked like uh i don't know if i believe in aliens or <laughs> ufos <laughs> literally yes but i mean I don't believe in hidden bases, you know, buried under the desert or anything like that. So, I'm certainly open to listen, though. I mean, I, if yeah, someone's gonna, yeah. uh, I mean, I, and that stuff can be very entertaining sometimes, whether Absolutely. I believe it or not. It's all about entertainment. Yeah. And, I, was, uh, I was a coast to coast AM listener for like over a decade, you know, and like with started with Art Bell, you know, went way back. And you know, like that was like probably sixty to seventy percent of the content on that show was like UFO stuff, and them like trying to convince me that you know Area Fifty One, they're like they're doing all this shit, and like you know it is interesting. I heard Dr. Stephen Greer on Coast to Coast many many times, and I this means like I yeah, I mean I I've I've listened to this guy multiple times. I think I kind of told you, I mean we kind of talked about him before we watched this thing. Um, and I'm being one hundred percent honest. I don't. Do you know what he's a doctor? <laughs> I don't think I've ever heard. He, that, he's a doctor of being swole. <laughs> yeah, a, he is. Yeah, doctor of thugonomics. <laughs> um, I, like, no, I, I was actually wondering that about, uh, I don't know, 45 minutes, an hour in. I was wondering, like, okay, he's a doctor. Like, what did he get this PhD in? <laughs> like, yeah, what's the PhD in? I, I couldn't quite get Good job with the celebrity cameo, cameos, though. Oh, yeah, oh, for yeah. sure. Jeremy Piven? Call that one right up. <laughs> Oh yeah, you got that immediately. Uh, ben Affleck was in there. Ben Affleck, Tom DeLonge, who I did oh, as going a... back to uh, going back to Aerosmith, who had uh, Steven Tyler oh, in there. <laughs> Steven Tyler oh, and Joe Rogan. Right. Yeah, yeah. That shit was. So... I, I have a question for you guys because uh, this movie did remind me of. Uh, well, I guess like Coast to Coast, uh, but there's. Uh, uh, I guess in this uh, Mexican channels here in El Paso, uh, there uh, there's this show called, and I'm just translate it. It's called the Third Millennium, and it was essentially this kind of like U UFOs, but trying to like put the scientists scientific twist to it as well. Uh, did you guys have like other shows like that that you guys were kind of like grow like like oh, kind of yeah. like grow Sighting. into sighting yeah. sightings? I never yes. heard of this. You never heard of sightings? Sightings no. was like it was think of it like a uh, like almost like a new show like. Um... Uh, like one of those, like uh, uh, Prime Impact, or like you know one of those kind of shows where it was like yeah. celebrity news and stuff. But this was all like um, reported paranormal and supernatural phenomena from across the country. So they would do like uh, crop circles and the ghosts. Like there's a famous like uh, guy that kept getting scratched up in this little house in Indiana, I believe. Uh, that was like what sightings like made their their, their fucking nut on was that fucking episode. I'm like yeah, yeah. no sightings. Like one of those shows that like had an eerie, eerie theme music and stuff like that. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it had some kind of tie-in with the X Files. I don't remember what it was. Like, I think they, they I mean, it was did something with the alien autopsy. There was some alien autopsy thing. I think sightings was involved with. I'm not. Yeah, something. Yeah, was, I don't. I mean, yeah, Fox? sightings. Is, it was on Fox. Yeah. 
I, I want to yeah. say it was on Netflix also. Was it really? I thought, yeah, I thought you could have found it on something by now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because I know they had the uh, what was the the show with the mass magician? The yeah, oh, magician. <laughs> yeah, that was that was on Netflix. <laughs> that was on Netflix. So I watched like uh, eight or nine episodes of it, and then they unmasked him, and it kind of took away the fun. Yeah. <laughs> it, wasn't it was the on like fortunate not that fucking thing on now. <laughs> <laughs> well, they don't need it because Chris Angel just ruins it for everybody. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's uh, also David Blaine out there. I can't be mad at Chris Angel anymore. I fucking found out he's got like a really sick kid. It made me sad for always talking shit about him. So. <laughs> You know that's that's it's funny that you say that because there was this uh, there was this wrestler um, I forgot his name but he was on WWF and I, and, I, and and I hated him like I couldn't stand him and then there was a thirty for thirty about uh, NXT their their developmental thing and he has a really sick child oh. and I felt really bad I was like man I've been calling this guy the worst <laughs> name to, just because I don't like his gimmick like, yeah, <laughs> and in real life he's actually like kind of a nice guy. <laughs> Yeah. That was the biggest yeah. trick he ever played on us. <laughs> quite the heel turn. It was yours. That was oh! quite the heel turn. You were the bad people. <laughs> oh. oh man. Oh man. Oh man. All right. So guys, I'm hosting. I'm pretty sure you guys have figured that out. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Uh, and uh, this Saturday, this uh, this episode actually comes out on my birthday, Saturday. I will be, I think, 35 or 36. I don't know. I lost count. Uh, I think I was 26 twice in one year or twice, whatever. Uh, drugs are weird, so stay away from those kids. Uh, this is a 420 show, so, you know, let's have fun. Uh, these are not any 420-related questions, but there are ten questions here, and I hope they're uh, kind you of. You just said, but there are, but there are four hundred twenty questions. Oh, I should have done four hundred twenty <laughs> questions. Damn it! Uh, so they're Me they're too. gonna. Ra- <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on, guys. Let me just rewrite this really quick. Uh, they're gonna range from horror to superhero stuff to fun little facts, uh, everything that we kind of like talked about in the last couple of weeks. Uh, so it will. It's going to be very, very, very fun. Um, there is a point system. Whoever gets, you know, I guess the most points wins. I guess I hope you're keeping tra- you're keeping track of this, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But the points don't matter as well. So oh, okay. Right. So yeah, it's just like a whose line is it? Anyways, I'm Drew Carey. One of you, both of you guys oh, are Wayne Brady. Didn't say Chris Hardwick. <laughs> <laughs> oh no no i'll never be i want to know i've had so many carries. problems with that guy oh man <laughs> no this is a family show nobody talks about chris hardwick here oh, i hope it's not <laughs> <laughs> anyways first question is about chris hardwick no it's not uh so the <laughs> so the first question for a whole point is how many movies have sam raimi and bruce campbell been in or how many movies have has Sam oh, Raimi directed shit. that has Bruce Campbell in it? Oh shit! Can all of them count? Right, that's an answer. Six? So I would say six. Okay, then I'll say seven. seven. So You'll I'll say seven. seven. Yeah. <laughs> I said it first. <laughs> you did. You did. All right. Okay. Wait. So, wait. Okay. Let's see. Evil so, Dead. Evil Dead Two. Are, are we talking? Closest about going over. Right. I'm gonna stick with six. I don't know. Yeah, I, I kind of wanted to go down to four, but you know what? I'm gonna stick with seven. No, go with the gut. Seven. Awesome, Pat. You got yourself a point there, my friend. Ah, fuck. Oh, it's well, at least power of seven. Guess. At least seven. At movies. least. At least yeah. seven movies. At least. Know I can... Cool. So the trilogy, the Spider-Man trilogy, is three right there. He's in all three of those. He's in all three of those. Fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And then he's in all three Evil Dead, so there's six. There's six. Yeah. So I mean, it goes. From there, and then I do. I, I wasn't. I, I was kind of like going to be Is more he of a in Drag out. Me to Hell. That's what I, I don't remember if it was in Drag Me to Hell. And I did I you get thought, these questions out, or did you guess? Did you guess on the answers? I know. No, I actually. It I sounds like it. it might be six. I googled oh, it. So what I did googled, Google say? What are what are the seven besides? So we know Evil I, Dead. We know Spider Man. So we just need at least one more. Uh, you know what? I just said at least seven. That's what Google gave me. And Google just responded to me. <laughs> yeah, it's serious. That, that was wow. yeah. That, that's funny. That's super funny, actually. Oh, that's so I'll give you guys, you know, I'll give both of you guys that point. That hard. <laughs> <laughs> you, 
I'll give you... They can give you an exact count of how many people have died of corona, but they can't tell you how many. <laughs> At least seven, <laughs> but definitely six. Yeah. It's a hard it's a hard six. Six point five. Hard. Okay. hard six off seven. We got you. All right. Uh, we've uh we uh George second question for a full point. Uh George C. Scott recently passed away. He starred in Disney's first animated sequel. Which was it? First animated sequel? First animated sequel. Holy shit. He starred in it? He starred in it. Uh, damn, I am not... Oh, uh, um, the, 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 the Rescuers Down Under 2. Oh, yes. fuck. Yes. God yes. damn it. That's a good Was answer. that real? That's a good yeah, that's real. You Rescuers got down it? Under... Oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> I was guessing. Yeah, nice. yeah. So, yeah, like, Ooh. Rescuers came out in the 70s. It was such a huge hit that, you know... 10 years, 11 years later, they decided to make a sequel. And that was their first sequel. Before, like, DVD, straight-to-DVD sequels started happening, this was the first right. actual Disney I sequel. I liked it. I wanted to go see that shit in the theaters. That was a fucking great movie. I fucking it's love right. that movie. It is The Rescuers 2 the one where he goes, Ow! Oh, my groin! <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you guys doing good? You guys doing yeah. good? Awesome. Well, no, you know what? I'll, I'll tell you something. Like they, they uh, said that it would be really stormy here, and not only is it not stormy, it's in the nineties, and my balls are sweating like crazy. <laughs> so I don't know. I don't know if I'm doing good. But I'm certainly sweating. <laughs> I'm sweating because the AC gets shut off when I have to record. Um, oh, so shit. this is yeah. Uh, it's it's a nice little sauna here. I mean, you gotta, do, just... you gotta make that noise, gate, Danny. I'll teach you how to make that noise gate on your computer. Ooh, thank you. I'll, I'll, I'll hit you up after the show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> actually, keep your distance. <laughs> That's very, very true. Uh, <laughs> so speaking of distance here, uh, what is the longest Star Wars movie? And what is the shortest Star Wars movie? Speaking okay. Of, speaking uh, of uh, talk of the clouds. Right, we're counting. Long. Yeah, that was super long. Are we count, just we're counting all, all, all nine? Just or nine. just all oh, in general? Shit. No. Just, then all, just a nine. Just a nine. Okay, okay. Okay, lo- shortest I would say is I'm I'm just gonna say real quick Jedi, uh, longest Phantom Menace. I'm gonna go, uh, the last Skywalker was it Rise of Skywalker is the longest, and I'm gonna go I'm gonna go Empire is the shortest. Mm. No, New Hope. Changing answer, New Hope, and then the last Skywalker or whatever it's called. Okay, well, so uh, Blake, wrong. Uh, Blake gets it actually. It's the first. Movie the really? Yeah, the first is the shortest. The last one is the longest. I got go, it. Really? Yeah. yeah, they all go like a minute longer each time. So I, I, I think that's the stupidest thing Is that thing intentional? Ever. I don't know if that's intentional. Like, I always think that that's like... I hope so. Better be. I, I guess they're adding like a little bit of story bits, but like every single time, like, you know, uh, Jedi or the last... I'm sorry, Return of the Jedi was like the longest one of the trilogy. And then you got Phantom Menace and then you get like fucking attack of the clones and it just goes every sequel just jumps a minute more than the than the last one is there more story maybe do we all hit love with those movies <laughs> it is interesting I yeah, it's love crazy it. because oh, it's the, the prequels seem like like it's so long <laughs> the Phantom Menace is like, it's... particularly seems long to me because it is such trash <sighs> yeah yeah i yeah i feel like the return of the sith is is goes pretty quick, but yeah, that man, but Jesus Christ, like Attack of the Clones just fucking kill me, just fucking kill yeah. me. <laughs> it's a tough one. Uh, it is. You are the chosen. <laughs> you were my brother. Uh, so recently, uh, Pat has been talking about the new show Cursed on Shutter. Um, this movie is not, not considered cur- yet. <laughs> this movie is not considered a cursed film. But it did win an Oscar after the main actor accidentally passed away. Yeah, oh fuck! It's on Shutter. No, uh, the Curse is on Shutter. This movie is not a Curse. Oh, Curse films. Oh, 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 so this, but you're just saying that the main actor of this died shortly after. So the film. is it like is it co-star or actual star or top billing or because I mean the first thing I thought was the the second Dark Knight movie. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> There's other people who have died. Pat. But there, there are, <laughs> but that no, weren't no, Oscar. Yeah, no, I've always there. respected Heath Ledger because if I were to go out, if I went out at that young of an age, I would like to go out the way he did because I think he was like trying to make his own heroin. Still, which is like in bed. 
uh, he was trying to make heroin, like homemade heroin. <laughs> That's pretty fucking awesome. Was he really? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Holy shit, like in a three liter bottle or something? What the fuck? Did it explode? <laughs> Is that what happened? Did he die? Well, well his, his body exploded. Oh. He, he, he just got the oh. he got the measurements a little off. Oh, god damn it. Rip. Uh, and that's the downer of the whole game hey, show here. Sweet, cheery, <laughs> sweet, awesome, cheery game show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> What what show doesn't talk about death? Um, oh, God. Game sure. show. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> take that, Alex Trebek. I'm coming after you, sir. Oh, whoa, leave Alex out. He's got enough that's, problems going on. That's right? very, you're, you're right. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Alex. Uh, Pat Sajak, I'm coming after your. Yeah, your there you go. <laughs> take it, Pat could use a couple more problems. <laughs> Let me put it that way. Yeah. <laughs> He's had a pretty uh, easy <laughs> last 30 years. He had a pretty cushy job. He has a cushy job. Yeah, dude. That's the fucking easiest job ever. Uh, yeah, and then right. he had a talk show for a while. He did? Yeah. Say Jack on Say Jack. That's not what it's called. <laughs> uh, I have no way to say segue this. you off. <laughs> uh, Pat Say Jack featuring... Uh, Fucking Vina White. No, uh, she was in the news recently. What for? She hosted. She hosted she the whole episode. Hosted. Yeah, she yeah. Ho- yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just like me. It's probably a train wreck. Oh, you're the you are the Vanna White of the show. <laughs> cool. <laughs> I'm just gonna say quiet and flip letters now. Or blocks, whatever. <laughs> uh this look, you look good doing it though, buddy. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh so this uh I don't know how to segue into this one. Uh don't but worry. we're just gonna Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so we're going to do this. We were talking about Sega Genesis and uh, Nintendo products earlier. This movie is known for an extensive Nintendo product placement. It is also known for the official appearance of Super Mario Brother 3. Super uh, Mario Oh, uh, the wizard. Yeah. God damn it. Yeah, that one I know. Damn. I was, was going to get uh... the Mario Brothers movie. So, <laughs> that, that that that's in the uh the the what's that electric boogaloo the story of canon or whatever i think yeah. i believe they mentioned that in there yeah yeah also oh, everybody was already talking about this game because it came out of japan the year prior but this was a, like you know everybody in america was like foaming at the mouth for this movie super mario world 3 yes. or uh, super mario uh, bros or, yeah uh bros yeah bros bros Super Which Mario one is that? So what's that? that was, what's the specific thing about That's that? That's the first appearance of like the frog suit and the tacoon, Tanuki, 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 Tanuki suit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That one you could slide down hills on your butt and mm-hmm. um. And oh, Yoshi? Is there Yoshi in that one or no? That's Super Mario Brothers that's or Super Mario, Mario World. World. Oh, that's World. That's yeah, the first yeah. one for Nintendo. Okay. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Super Mario Three was cool. It was really cool. Yeah, I have yeah. like one of those mini Nintendo that's got all that. Well, I, I, doesn't the fucking Switch have it too? The Switch has it too. Like it's, yeah. it's like what Nintendo knows how to do is how to oversell their product or old, you know. Well, big jokes on them. I fucking got one of those Super Nintendo mini things, and I hacked that motherfucker, and I put every game that Super Nintendo and Nintendo ever had on. So <laughs> come at me, Nintendo! You got bigger <laughs> fish to fry. I'll say whatever I want. <laughs> Uh, question number six. Uh, this movie came out in 1999. Give me a point for that. What? I want a point for that rant. Just, oh. I'm just joking. <laughs> I will give you a point for that. Actually, you know what? <laughs> fuck it. This this show doesn't. The points don't matter. Sorry, I'm sorry. <laughs> but don't worry. At the end of it, we're all gonna have to do a hoedown, so it's gonna be oh, fun. Sweet. <laughs> sweet. At the end, so, do we get to do a stump the host question? Sure. Oh, Why not? All right. Uh, this movie came out in 1999. It is considered a sleeper hit. High club. Making $250 million <laughs> on a 60000 budget. Name this indie film. Because this is a Railway fucking... Project. Oh, god damn. Blair Witch Project. Yeah. What? what? <laughs> Blair Witch. Yeah. Uh... What were you going to say? <laughs> Blake... I, because I, if it was such a downer, I was going to say Patch Adams. <laughs> Patch Adams. <laughs> There's no way that movie made $250 million. Yeah, no. Not true, no. no. 
Very, very. That's just a sad, sad, sad movie. <laughs> if it did, then let it explain a lot. Let it make <laughs> uh, While Patch Adams is not an indie film, uh, Teenage yeah. Mutant Ninja Turtles were uh, puppets. What company helped make this these puppets come to life? Hasbro. <laughs> well, uh, kind of. Henson. Yeah. Oh, 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 which company made them come to life? Yeah, know. the puppets, yeah. <laughs> Give me another. Uh, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to demand points. Uh, <laughs> But you know, here, here, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you this one here, Blake. This is pretty easy. Uh, uh, like yeah, pitch. Uh, a, a soft pitch, but it's also being pitched to Pat at the same time. Half uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh Speaking of uh, of indie movies, uh, what movie dethroned uh, Teenage Mutant Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in being the highest grossing independent film at the time? Teenage Mutant Turtles is an independent film. Yep. Oh, what replaced? Uh, uh, yeah. uh, God damn! I was gonna say fucking. Oh, what's the Matthew McConaughey movie? Dazed and Confused. No. No shit. Um, uh, and you said Clerks. So that's a good guess. Uh, highest grossing. Oh, uh, uh, Pulp Fiction. Is this Merrimax count? Oh, Mer- yeah, Pulp no. Fiction. Okay. No, sir. Uh, hmm. All right, one more guess from you two guys, and now I'm gonna uh, just say it independent out. film. Can, can yeah. you at least tell us what year it came out in, or something? Oh like yeah, nineteen ninety nine. Oh, it was ninety nine. Awesome. Uh, oh, okay, uh, Fight Club. No. Fuck. Uh, I'm gonna come on. Come on. We just talked about it. Oh, we just talked about it. We just it? talked about it. Just right uh, now. Close Encounters of the Fourth Kind. No. <laughs> we literally just talked about it right now. God damn it. <laughs> it shows you. Dude, <laughs> no. I'm already, I already forgot what we talked about. Everything. <laughs> the Rescuers Down Under Part 2. Uh, <laughs> no. All right. So it's Blair Witch. Oh, Blair Witch. Oh, shit. Man. Oh, yeah. oh, damn. Yeah. All right. That makes sense. So no points for you guys here whatsoever. <laughs> You guys no should actually for us. no soup for you. Uh, we're, actually, we're down to the last two questions. Uh, these are up for double dollars. Uh, double bucks. Double bucks. Hell this yeah. is going to be the take the cake, something, something, take the cake and eat it, or whatever thing. Um, so I think we can agree on one thing Nick Cage. And oh, yes. he, is, he is weird, and we love yes. it. He won an Oscar. Fight Club. Uh, <laughs> uh, that Oscar? Las Vegas, uh, the oh, Las yeah, Vegas Las movie. Vegas. Uh, leave in Las Vegas, yeah. Would, did Blake also say it at the same time? Yeah. Yeah, he did. He said it first, and then I finished his thought, so we both did. I said leaving it. No, I said Las Vegas, and then he said leaving Las leave. Vegas. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, but after like, I said, oh, yeah. It was after <laughs> Because I was going to say fear and loathing in Las Vegas. I was like, oh, wait, that's not it. <laughs> <That's what laughs> Elizabeth Shue, man. That's a good Elizabeth, movie. Yeah, yeah. yeah Elizabeth Shue, babysitter, yeah. The babysitter from... I was going to say her adventures were just beginning. Yeah. <laughs> oh, shit, yeah. I was going to watch Nick Cage drink himself to death. What a fucking lovely, <laughs> lovely thing. Uh, you know, that this is what this kind of show is. Uh, this trivia show, just about <laughs> death and depression. I mean, because half of these people are probably drinking right now either way. Welcome to the end time, everybody. (laughs) Anyways, uh, this is here for all the Monopoly money in the world. That should be that should have been that that Johnny Manziel money sign. I'm doing the Johnny Manziel money sign fingers right now. Show me the money. (laughs) (laughs) Michael Scott considers this his favorite Woody Allen Allen film. Uh, The Devil Wears Prada. That's gotta be right. <laughs> Blake? Oh, I'm gonna. Uh, I'm, shit, I don't know. I'm gonna say. Um, I'm gonna pick an actual Woody Allen movie. Uh, a Dog Day Afternoon. Or whatever that's called. Is that, is that a, is that I don't think so. Know? Yeah, whatever. That way. All right, guys. Uh, it's Ants. 
Ants? Oh, that's Ants. right. Yeah, he's the voice of uh, Corporal Ant. Yeah. What? Of of GI Ant. He is wow. a. Uh, it's an animated animated ant movie that came around the same time as Bugs Life, and it was trash. Uh, uh, but Michael Scott loves it, and I thought that was a great way to end, end this uh, this show. You're exposing me to the world and how little I know about the movies. <laughs> about Woodsy Allen movies. Yeah, I didn't even get the horror movie ones. <laughs> what horror movie ones were there? The Blair Witch was the know. answer for two answers. Oh yeah, I didn't get that. Yeah, shit, I didn't get that. So we get to we get to stump you now with a question. Uh, yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, you go first, Blake. Oh shit! Uh, you go first. I have to come up with something. I'm okay. Telling. Okay. Um. What 2016 movie stars two people who have been a uh, previously won, like, been a part of big the big four Oscars, like best actor, best writing, best director, and uh, well, no, three of the four because best actress is the other one. 2016. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah. 2016 movie that has uh, two actors in it that were a part of three of the big four Academy Awards in previous years. Phantom Thread? No. 2016. Jesus Christ. I'll let you think uh, about it while Blake asks this question. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, I'll enjoy some dead okay. silence here. Um, uh, yeah. As I, you're I, Googling yeah. it like a cheater. Yeah. No, <laughs> I have to. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know what. Yeah. I, I, does Blake oh, get there? Right. I think it's terrible. I think it's terrible. Jesus Christ. No, I, actually, I just made that up. There's, there's oh. no answer. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, all right, you. I got hey. you one. You ready uh, for one? Yes. Okay. What? What I would call, I would say heartthrob. What heartthrob was Emilio Estevez married to from 1992 to 1994? And I'll hear you clicking on Google or you're fucking looking at it. Motherfucker. <laughs> heartthrob. Like, Emilio Estevez. Heart, heart, or hot. Uh, okay, Emilio Estevez is a heartthrob. Yeah, I will. Uh, yeah. Well, uh, and his wife was a heart, uh, heartthrob. Oh, well. I, think, I know. I, I, I think I know who you're talking about, but I, I won't answer because yeah. it's from Danny. Is this Winoa Ryder? No, Winoa! Winoa! I love when you call her Winoa. <laughs> my favorite thing ever. No, it was not Winoa. Oh, uh, okay. Matt, you, you want to take a crack? Uh, uh, Denise Richards? No! Milo Estevez was married to Paula Abdul. Oh, oh that's, that's right. It was Paula Abdul. Damn it. Damn. Uh, wasn't Charlie Sheen <laughs> married to Denise Richards? Huh? Charlie Sheen uh, was. Charlie Sheen was. was. Yeah, I think they were shacked up for a while. Yeah. yeah. She's, healthy. Uh, She's healthy after all that. Every Saturday, you can find us here. Uh, the rest of the week, you can go to adventuresandportaste.com where you can find all of our podcasts. Uh, even though no one's really listening to podcasts right now, you can uh, go to Talking Tauntauns or Portaste Wrestling or check out our general podcast. Also, this isn't a regular thing, but every once in a while, we'll be having uh, our podcast here on YouTube, a uh, video podcast. So you can uh, check out what Danny looks like uh, topless. That, actually, oh. I'm topless right now. Uh, and you can follow Adventures in Movies over on Twitter at AIPT Movies, or you can follow us individually. You can find Nathaniel on Instagram at Nathan Portes. You can find me topless on Twitter and Instagram. You could also say happy birthday to me if you like uh, over at. <laughs> this, is, this is so terrible. I'm so sorry. <laughs> at Digiball underscore player. And you can find uh, Blake the Bong Heath. Oh, say, say it again. Say it again. Blake. The bong, Heath. The bong. <laughs> Don't get it wrong. <laughs> At four eyed whore. <laughs> oh, speaking of that, so next week, uh, four twenty month continues. Um, uh, we're gonna be talking about trippy movies, so not necessarily movies that involve drugs, but maybe. Um, but it'd be better if you watch them while real fucking high on drugs. Check it out. <laughs> and you can find us on uh, Apple Podcasts. You can find us on Spotify. You can look for us on Stitcher. Or uh, you can just go to the website. We're definitely on there. Make sure to give us a rating or just tell a friend to listen. And that's our cue. We will talk to you next week. Don't forget to stay and neuter your cats and dogs. Uh, Yo, stay inside.